Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing principal ideal domains. Okay, so in this next video, what I want to do is see another interesting theorem about principal ideal domains. Okay, and this interesting theorem is going to concern when is a polynomial ring going to actually be a principal ideal domain. So what we've seen so far is that if you construct a polynomial ring over a field, then that will always end up being a principal ideal domain because actually it will always end up being a Euclidean domain and all Euclidean domains are principal ideal domains. Okay, our question is now going to become is that the only way that a polynomial ring uh, can actually be a principal ideal domain? I.e. if we now look at uh, the polynomial ring where the coefficients are in some more general ring, capital R, which we're going to insist is a non-zero commutative ring. Okay, so this will be a non-zero commutative ring, but not necessarily a field. Okay, I'm not insisting that all non-zero elements in this non-zero commutative ring have multiplicative inverses. Okay, it's just now a general non-zero commutative ring. I want to ask, is it the case that if this is going to be a principal ideal domain, R has to be a field. Okay, so what I'm now going to assume is that this polynomial ring that we've ended up with here is a principal ideal domain. Okay, so let's assume that it is a PID. And what I now want to prove is that actually from this you can prove that R is a field. Okay, so it's the only way, basically, that a polynomial ring can actually end up being a principal ideal domain uh, for the non-zero commutative ring that its coefficients are taken from to actually be a field. Okay, so it's an if and only if, basically. Uh, if you are uh, working with a field and you take the ring of polynomials over that field, then you will end up with a principal ideal domain, and that's the only way that you can end up with a principal ideal domain. So what I now want to prove to prove that is, let's suppose that we have this polynomial ring where we've got a non-zero commutative ring uh, from which we're taking our coefficients for uh, the polynomials. It, let's suppose that it is a principal ideal domain, and now let's prove from that that we can conclude that R is a field. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing I want to show you is that if this is the case, that the polynomial ring over this ring capital R uh, is actually an principal ideal domain, then we can conclude that R is an integral domain. Okay, so this is the first thing that I want to conclude. R is an integral domain. Okay, so how can I conclude that? Okay, uh, well, uh, the reason I can conclude this is that R, after all, is going to be a subring of the ring of polynomials uh, over that ring. Okay, so R is certainly going to be a subset because the constant polynomials, you can think of those as being equivalent to the elements in the original ring, capital R. Okay, so remember the constant polynomials are the ones where all of the um, terms with a power of x greater than zero have as their coefficient zero, and all you have as the non-zero coefficient is the constant term which is in front of x to the power of zero effectively. Okay, so you can associate uh, all of those with elements of the original ring, okay, and their addition and multiplication will be identical to the way that they are added in the initial ring. So you can certainly think of the ring as being a subring of the ring of polynomials. Okay, now because the ring of polynomials is a principal ideal domain, that means it's an integral domain. Okay, and any subring of an integral domain is also going to be an integral domain because if it's the case that, of course, except of course the zero ring, uh, which is of course always a subring, uh, but this isn't the zero ring. Uh, so um, the reason that will be is that if you have two non zero elements here, you can't multiply those together and expect to get something that is equal to zero because otherwise it would be true that you could also do that here, okay? And since this is an integral domain, uh, you can't have that. So basically, uh, all non-zero elements must multiply together to give another non-zero element uh, in this ring, otherwise it would not be true that this could possibly be a principal ideal domain because it wouldn't even be an integral domain. Okay, so we can conclude that our ring capital R then is an integral domain if the ring of polynomials is a principal ideal domain. Okay, now how, where are we going to go next? 
Okay, so next I need you to consider a certain quotient ring. Again, this is a really rather uh, ingenious little argument here. Okay, so I want you to consider a certain quotient ring, and this is going to be the absolute key to this proof, okay? So this proof is not particularly long, it's all about understanding this quotient ring that we're about to construct, okay? If you understand this quotient ring, then after that it's completely simple, uh, the argument. Okay, so we need to understand this quotient ring. I'm going to take the polynomial ring here, and I'm going to quotient it out by the principal ideal generated by x, the monomial x, okay? And now we need to understand what we're actually going to end up with here. And I claim that we're actually going to end up with something that is isomorphic in a very natural way uh, to the initial ring, capital R. So isomorphic in such a natural way that I will not write is isomorphic to, but is actually equal to here. Okay, so because the isomorphism is so natural, I'm good, just going to write is equal to R here. Okay. Uh, so that is my claim, and we need to understand why that's so important, and, well, firstly, why that's true, and then why that's so important. Okay, so let's just think about this. So how do we construct a quotient ring? Well, let's draw our picture here. Okay, so let's say this is our ring of polynomials over the ring capital R here, okay, and I'll just colour it in in, I think, orange here. Okay, so now we need to Think about this ideal a little bit more, the principal ideal generated by x. What is that actually going to consist of? Well, that's going to be all the elements of the ring of polynomials multiplied by x. Okay, so I'll mark it here. Okay, this is going to be my principal ideal generated by x. So one of the things you're going to, of course, end up with is the zero polynomial, because you'll multiply x by the zero polynomial and you'll get zero back again. So zero will be in there, okay? Uh, but what else are you going to end up with? The other things that you're going to end up with is any old polynomial, which I'll call p of x here, times x. So in fact, you're going to end up with any polynomial you like, except you can't determine the constant term. The constant term is fixed. The constant term will always have the coefficient zero. Okay, so it will always be plus zero, but in all the other terms, you can have whatever coefficients you like, okay, because you can vary p of x here. Okay, and of course, p of x, if I write it out more explicitly, it will be some polynomial of this form, p0 plus p1x plus all the way up to pnx to the n here. Okay, and by choosing these coefficients, p0, p1, uh, all the way up to pn, you can determine the coefficient in front of x, the coefficient in front of x squared, etc. Okay, so you can determine all of the coefficients in front of all the powers of x, x except the power x to the power of 0. Okay, you cannot determine the constant term. The constant term is always equal to 0. So that gives us a good bit of intuition as to which polynomials are going to be in here. It's all the polynomials which have constant term 0. Now let's think about the additive cosets that we'll get when we quotient up our ring of polynomials here according to this ideal here. Okay, so the additive cosets then will just be all of these things added to certain elements. And in fact, I claim that these cosets are just going to have as their representatives the constant polynomials. So let me just explain what I mean by this. So for instance, one of the polynomials that will be outside of um, the ideal here, the principal ideal generated by x, will be the polynomial which is just a constant polynomial and that's 1, okay, our multiplicative identity, okay? Uh, so then what we'll end up doing is adding on everything that's in this ideal here to 1 and what will we end up with then? Well, hopefully you can understand that we'll end up with all polynomials which have as their constant term 1. Okay, because here is all the polynomials that have as their constant term 0. When you add 1 onto them, you'll just end up as your coset here, the coset generated by 1 here, the coset under 1 here. You'll just end up with all polynomials with constant term 1. Okay, and it goes on. In another coset here, you might have the constant polynomial, let's say little r here, and then the coset will end up being just all polynomials where the constant term is r. So in fact, these cosets are just the subsets of this ring of polynomials which have the same uh, constant terms. You're just partitioning, basically, your ring of polynomials up into the subsets of polynomials with a, the same constant term. 
Okay, now, that means that all of these cosets can be represented by that one polynomial, uh, which is just the constant term. Okay, the constant term that pertains to that coset, basically. Okay, so all of these cosets that we are forming here are just going to each be represented by the constant polynomial, which is special to them. Okay, and now what does that mean? Well, when we define addition and multiplication on this set of cosets here, of course it will be using representatives. Addition will just be use representatives. Multiplication will just be use representatives. You can pick as your representative just the constant polynomial that is special to that coset. And of course, when you add or multiply those constant polynomials, it's just exactly the same as it was in the initial ring, capital R. So hopefully you can now understand why there is this very nice relationship here. Why, when we quotient out the ring of polynomials um, over the ring capital R here, by the principal ideal generated by x, we do just end up with the ring back again. Because this structure, which is these cosets, is just going to be uh, equivalent, effectively, to the initial ring, because each of the cosets is just going to be represented by an element of the initial ring, and the way that addition and multiplication is going to work is exactly as it would be in the initial ring, because you can take as your representative of the cosets just the element of the initial ring uh, that represents it. Okay, so I hope you understand why that is true then. Okay, now, uh, it's very simple from here on in. We can do this in a few lines now. Okay, so, because this ring here is an integral domain, then what does that then tell us about this I principal ideal generated by x? Whenever you quotient out a um, commutative ring, which this certainly is, by an ideal and get an integral domain, you can conclude that this is a prime ideal. Okay, so we can now conclude that this is a prime ideal in the ring of polynomials here. Okay, uh, so that's a theorem that we prove in the video on prime ideals. Now, what we've already proven is that if you're working in a principal ideal domain, all non-zero prime ideals are maximal ideals. This is certainly a non-zero prime ideal. Okay, uh, so it will be a maximal ideal. So because this is a principal ideal domain, we can conclude that the principal ideal generated by x is a maximal ideal. And what do we know happens when you quotient a ring out by a maximal ideal? When you quotient out a non-zero commutative ring, which this certainly is here, uh, by a maximal ideal, you end up with a field. Okay, so we can now conclude that this thing that we've ended up with here is a field. Again, we prove that if you quotient out a um, non-zero commutative ring by maximal ideal, you get a field in the video on maximal ideals. Okay, so this is going to be a field. Okay, and there we are. Done. We've proven that it's a field. And it stems from the theorem that we already proved, which was that all non-zero prime ideals were maximal ideals in a principal ideal domain. Okay, so to summarize, what we have now shown is that it's an if and only if condition. If you generate a polynomial ring over a field, you get a principal ideal domain, and that's the only way you can do it. It will only be a principal ideal domain if that thing that you use is a field. Okay, if you just take an arbitrary commutative ring, it won't work. Okay, so it has to be a field. Right, and with that, we'll finish this discussion on principal ideal domains.